This is Obstacles and Opportunities. We are Lowell and Julie, like they mentioned, we're from Lethbridge. And it's really important for us to get to know our audience. So right now I'd like to have, on the count of three, everybody yell out their name. One, two, three. Nice. Lowell and Julie Taylor are two popular Southern Alberta motivational speakers who have an inspirational story to share with the public. I'm blind, and that's a pretty big obstacle. And while I wouldn't choose to be blind, I'm actually very thankful for all the opportunities it's given us and all the things that we've learned. During their enthusiastic and informative presentation, Lowell and Julie give the audience a chance to see what Lowell sees using goggles to simulate blindness. It has been the community around me that has gotten me through my deepest, darkest times. My lowest points, my depression, the struggles I've had with anxiety. It's been the community that has helped me get through and find my path to the other side of those moments. My message to people who are struggling is it can get better and it often gets better. Right? If we don't give up, if we can keep going, if we can find something to pour ourselves into. And it takes, it takes risks and it takes trying new things, it takes being vulnerable and it isn't always easy. Lowell has spent his life turning obstacles into opportunities. Life was a struggle as a kid. I was struggling with poor vision. I was struggling with being overweight. I was struggling with this bowel control issue. So I was a fat, blind, lonely, stinky kid. I didn't have many friends. I felt like I didn't belong. I cried myself to sleep many nights. On a family walk along the banks of the Old Man River in Lethbridge, Lowell reflects on a lifetime of overcoming challenges. As a child, a serious farm accident led to bowel problems. At school, he was bullied and teased and had low self-esteem. But by far, Lowell's greatest challenge is his failing eyesight, which has left him legally blind. I grew up north of Calgary in a small community, Carstairs, Alberta. I had an older brother and myself who were losing their vision, but my mom at the same time was struggling and my grandpa. So all of us were diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, which is an inflammation of the retina. It's where the rods slowly start dying and it leads to tunnel vision. So the peripheral vision goes first and then there's compromised central vision, no vision and low light, and it makes life challenging. I've never had full sight. As a child, I couldn't see at night but I did have a wider field of view and they were checking that every year we go and do our eye tests and sit in front of the machines and watch every year as our vision came back as being worse and worse. I wore big glasses and kids will tease. So I got bullied about my four eyes and the big glasses. I had glasses that would be there to protect my eyes from getting worse and they would go black when we go outside and they transition and but at that stage they were old technology and I'd walk into the building with these big black glasses and I couldn't see anything and childhood seemed endless and not a lot of hope. So I can look at it in hindsight and see as a child that maybe I was amongst many students who were struggling but I felt all alone at the time. I felt like I was struggling the most like everybody else seemed to have it together. Life started to improve for Lowell after high school. He enrolled in university where he developed a new, more confident persona and where he met his future wife, Julie. At first, I did not know that Lowell was visually impaired. I remember when I was attracted to him and he was approaching in my direction down the university hallway and I gave him a wave thinking like, oh, there's Lowell. And he completely ignored me and I thought, oh, rejection. And then I learned later that he was visually impaired. So he didn't actually see me. So, eh, not necessarily rejection. Julie is a speech pathologist and Lowell a registered psychologist. They share a passion for physical fitness and adventure, becoming known to many Canadians for their appearance on the network TV show, Amazing Race Canada. 
Julie and Lowell, married couple from Lethbridge, Alberta. Julie and I have been watching The Amazing Race from season one and two, and after season three finished, we thought that would be something we'd like to do. It was at the end of season three when we thought, hmm, the kids are probably old enough for us to leave. My parents will probably be willing to watch them for a little while. And Lowell still has some vision left, so let's apply and see what happens. And out of the 30,000 teams that applied, we are selected to go on this amazing adventure around Canada and in, across the world. I was the first visually impaired contestant on any Amazing Race franchise in the history of the show. The race is one example of the Taylors' efforts to lead a normal life despite Lowell's vision loss. They've also developed a love for tandem cycling, riding and charity events, and fun rides together. The long rural highways outside of Lethbridge serve as great training grounds for practice on their tandem bike. Life with Lowell is an adventure. He's always looking for the next obstacle to overcome, and I'm just lucky to be along for the ride. Lowell and I like to ride the tandem together for fun. Lowell likes to mess with me once in a while and really crank up the power behind me, which kind of freaks me out, keeps me on my toes. And Julie likes to put on the brakes as I'm pedaling to make <laughs> me work a little harder. Once in a while, I'll unclip my feet and just let Julie do the work, or I'll just relax on the back. I see pictures after the fact of Lowell taking selfies behind. Over a weekend, Julie and I have done charity rides where we get up to almost 400 kilometers in a weekend. Long distance, right? Your bum starts to hurt. You gotta get back on the bike the next day. And Julie's a trooper. She's not a pro cyclist, but she can hold her own. For Lowell, cycling is more than just something he does for fun and fitness. He's also become a high level competitive racer with a dream of cycling for Canada in future Paralympic Games. In their backyard garage, the Taylors have set up their own training facility, where Lowell spends hours working toward that dream. Okay, I'll come join. It's fun to be able to train in the garage together. We both have our own plans, we both have our own goals, but we can share the space together. Lowell is a member of Canada's Paracycling Next Gen program. On a stationary bike connected to interactive cycling software, Lowell can work on his speed, power, and endurance while racing against riders from other countries. Meanwhile, Lowell's coach in Calgary can monitor his progress. So in peak season, I'm training about six days a week. We often have a, a rest day, sometimes rest weeks, to help recover. But for the most part, I'm out in the garage one to four hours a day putting a lot of sweat down. <laughs> With Julie's support, Lowell has overcome many obstacles in his life. He's never considered his visual impairment a barrier. I don't think that I would be the same person today if I hadn't struggled with all the challenges I did when I was a child. Being able to develop a deeper resiliency because of those struggles, that's part of that growth mindset that the struggles we experience, when we can overcome them, when we have the right tools and supports in our lives, we can become stronger after adversity. We'll return to obstacles and opportunities. We now return to obstacles and opportunities. My visual impairment is just part of my identity. It's only part of who I am. There are many other parts. I'm a psychologist, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a friend. I'm a blind guy who doesn't look blind, and that creates barriers in all aspects of life. Before tandem cycling, Lowell Taylor competed in the endurance sport of paratriathlon, competing in local, national, and international events. Triathlon saved my life in many ways. It gave me a new passion, a sense of meaning and purpose, something to pour myself into when I had nothing else that I was excelling at. I believe we have our first biker in, Lowell Taylor starting the run with Warren Molnar. Warren Molnar is a Lethbridge firefighter and Lowell's triathlon partner. He introduced Lowell to triathlon, a sport that includes swimming, running and cycling. 
Warren trained and competed with Lowell for years and continues to be one of his biggest supporters. When I came in contact with Lowell, he told me about his dream of wanting to do uh, triathlon at a competitive level. And with his vision impairment, he needs a pilot. And so I felt really excited to be able to help him. Warren and I were part of the same community. I knew of him and his passion was triathlon. He was an amazing athlete, winning all the races that he did. And he found out that I enjoyed triathlon. And as my vision was getting worse, I was needing other support. And I'd heard that there was this paratriathlon, this sport that I could do, where I would go with a guide. So I needed somebody else to do the sport with me. They would be my eyes. They would swim beside me, bike on a tandem, and run beside me. It started off a little shaky because in the warm up, I didn't guide him quite properly and he tripped over a uh, speed bump and fell and <laughs> I said, Lowell, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> Warren and I competed together and we did pretty good. We were able to get a gold medal in our first international level triathlon. It was such a great feeling. I was starting to believe in myself and feel I could compete on the world stage. I feel that at least I was a catalyst for him. Um, getting going with the triathlon and having lots of success and fun and getting on a training program. Graham Reimer is a local mortgage broker and another of Lowell's training partners. They share a long-held passion for cycling. Where it all started is we just started biking together and, uh, and then we started doing more and more long distance stuff together. We'd go for these bike rides in, in and around Lethbridge on the highways and I would be his eyes and say, hey, okay, we're coming to a stop sign, or you know, we would do that together. We're biking together. He was doing Ride for Reason, this charity bike ride. And so we'd be doing anywhere from 100 to 160 kilometers in a day. And, and so we'd be biking together, training together. And I remember the, the year that he had said, you know what, I, I want to maybe push this a little bit further. And I wonder, I wonder if I could actually become uh, a Paralympic athlete for this. Warren and I were hoping that we could make it to the Rio de Janeiro Paralympics in 2016, but men's paratriathlon was not selected into that event, so we had to find another sport. And cycling was my strongest of the three sports, so I decided to go into cycling. Para road and track cycling became the new passion. So that was a fun part of, of my role to say, you gotta go for it. You gotta, this is now the time. Yeah, your age is right, your dreams are right, your goals are right, your family, your wife is supporting you in this. Uh, so that was, I think, my role on the side is that it's kind of a now or never thing. One of the most influential people in Lowell's cycling growth and development is his first coach, Stephen Burke. I always say I'd rather work with a motivated or, or a, a hardworking athlete versus a talented athlete, but he was both. He was talented, but also had the great work ethic. I've never seen anybody that could do a program perfectly you would ask him to do the training and he'd document everything and it would be there. And the, the proof was six weeks later he was stronger and faster. Everyone was talking about Stephen Burke. He was helping people launch into parasport, into paracycling. He helped me find a bike. He connected me with a pilot. My first pilot was Mark McDonald, a junior who raced for Canada. Stephen sent us off two weeks later after meeting each other to the track nationals in Milton, Ontario. This was the national event. Mark had never been on a tandem. I had never been on the track. And within two weeks, we were able to go to nationals and win two bronze medals. We were thinking, there's something here. It takes more than friends, coaches, and training partners to help Lowell achieve his goals. Good job, Daddy! He and Julie also rely heavily on family. Julie and the kids are crucial. Julie has veto power. The moment she says the dream is done, I would stop. While it's important to her that we have something, that, I, that I'm alive and that I'm taking care of myself, Julie and the kids are my biggest support. But it takes more than just us, and I'm away a lot with racing. We need people like family and friends to help take care of the kids and support us. My parents, Julie's parents, Pete and Betty, they're all these people who've come together to support us along the way so that we can achieve these great things. It's pretty natural to be Lowell's support. He always tells me I'm his biggest fan and he says I'm the kind of gal that you can hear before you see <laughs> because at his races I'm always the loudest. <laughs> Way to go guys! But I'm happy to be there. It's just this cool world that 
otherwise I wouldn't be a part of. And I love that our kids get to be a part of it too. Betty and Pete Gradanis are Julie's parents. One of the major roles they play is to look after the kids when the Taylors are on the road at an event or race, including one particular long stretch, when the couple was away taping The Amazing Race. Yeah, five weeks. <laughs> yeah, um, that was a long time, but it went, went very well. To be the backup with little children, there are times when they both have to be away or when Julie needs support when Lowell's away. And it's just a natural that we're here and we love those little boys. And so we're happy to be helpful and to be Nana and Papa and enjoy them. And it doesn't feel like an effort to us. And so we don't make them feel like it's an effort. Really, our lives could not be lived without my parents. They are our number one support. And my parents' place is a second home for our kids. Yeah, we're sort of the first point, but Auntie Shereen and Uncle Craig live in town and they back up in certain situations. Close by in Orion and Southern Alberta are um, Uncle Ryan and Auntie Julie and they have helped out when it's been a stretch when we need help. Are we and of course, away? or we've been away, and of course, Grandma and Grandpa Taylor and Carstairs are, um, you know, fill in often too. So we're kind of the head, but we're a community within a community, really. Support comes in many forms. Business owner Sarah Jorgensen helps the Taylors raise money to pursue their dreams by selling their Live With Heart clothing in her store. As soon as you say their name, I just smile because when the first time I was in contact is, is watching them on The Amazing Race. Huge, super fan of The Amazing Race. Was so happy to see a local team and watching them throughout the race. They're just so positive. They're probably the most positive team I've ever seen. They work together so well. They never fought. They, they were just really, really inspirational. Watching them on The Amazing Race and then following them on Facebook and their new dream to get really pushed to get Lowell to the Olympics and their Live With Heart brand, I thought as a, a local retailer, I could help them out uh, by selling, selling their products for them and carrying their inventory in our store um, with 100% of the proceeds going, going back to them. I sent them a message and, and they got back and, and Julie said, I, she said, my mom cried when, when you ha offered that and I thought, oh, you know, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It just was something that I thought I could do. There hasn't been one moment or one person that got me where I am today. It's been this process of many moments and many people. It's taken coaches and supports. It's taken a community to get me where I am today. It takes a community to be healthy a community to achieve these massive dreams. We'll return to obstacles and opportunities. We now return to obstacles and opportunities. Throughout his life, Lowell Taylor has never let retinitis pigmentosa stop him from setting goals and achieving success. And now, together with his racing teammate, Andrew Davidson, he's spending hundreds of hours on the tandem bike, working on the next big dream. The dream is to compete in the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. This year, I'm racing for Team Canada. We've competed at two World Cups in the Netherlands and in Quebec. Next year, we hope to compete in more World Cups, to compete at the World Championships, and be ready to represent Canada at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. In paracycling, both riders have clearly defined roles. Lowell's position in the back is called the stoker. Andrew is the pilot. The stoker, I guess Lowell being the position in the rear there, is providing the power. He's the engine for sure. So uh, yeah, just trying to stay tucked in behind me because aerodynamics is a big aspect and uh, providing as much power output as he can and then also feeling what I'm doing and trying to be in sync with that because um, I can't always verbally uh, give cues as to what we're doing. And then my role is the, the braking, the shifting of the gears, steering, and then tactically in a road race, knowing when to go and uh, yeah, how to play the race. Since becoming partners, Lowell and Andrew have developed into a strong, cohesive team in a relatively short period of time. The first time I got on a bike with Andrew, it was the most solid. It was the quickest anybody had ever picked up the tandem biking with me. He jumped on, it was solid, and we rode, and we rode hard and fast, and it felt secure. 
I knew that this was going to be a fit. It's been a good uh, educational experience for me, for sure, to uh, start to see things through somebody else's uh, perspective. It makes me just appreciate even more the Paralympic kind of journey, as any other athlete would be striving for uh, success plus an added element of uh, maybe of, a, of challenge along the way. It's so amazing to be able to do cycling with a partner. To do this dream with Warren at first with triathlon and then Mark as we started this dream and now with Andrew, it's a deep bond, it's a deep relationship. We are sweating together, we're working really hard together and we're chasing a dream together. Lowell's former cycling coach, Stephen Burke. What makes Lowell so successful and competitive is just his, his outlook on life. He wants to have fun. Like, he's, everything he's, he does, if it's not internally motivated and driven by some desire to have fun with his life and his family and his network, I think that's a big part of Lowell's success story. Lowell's success in triathlon and cycling, along with the recognition he and Julie received from The Amazing Race, has opened doors and created opportunities they never could have imagined. We have gotten into the motivational speaking world. We started a clothing line with Live With Heart gear. That's to support Lowell's Paralympic dream. We were also asked to be part of a documentary series called Mindset Go where we are the health coaches and we help guide participants on a journey to wellness of body, soul, and mind. So that voice might never go away, but if I can have a relationship with that voice, and now instead of trying to shut that voice down with food, I'm gonna use that as energy to empower me to say, I am enough. Many of us get stuck in life, and the idea is to start addressing our mindset. Why are we stuck? What are the barriers? And Julie and I come in as health and fitness coaches, we help provide some motivation and some direction, and we introduce them to Paralympians who can encourage and inspire. And at the end of the show, when each of these participants achieves their goal, they build self-confidence, and it's life-changing. I am so grateful that Lowell is such a positive guy in spite of, a, of his visual impairment. And we believe that negativity can be more debilitating than a disability. And Lowell proves every day that positivity outshines a disability. I wish that little Lowell had a big Lowell to look up to. The way Lowell is right now, how he overcomes his obstacles, and how he can turn down that voice of the bully inside, not listen to the bully on the outside, and just nail life. I wish that little Lowell had that same example when he was younger. That's what we're doing right now with our talks. We want to encourage people to turn their obstacles into opportunities, to turn down the voice of the bully, and to see their brokenness as beautiful. So I once saw myself as useless, as broken, but now I can see that the very thing that I thought made me broken makes me special. It's now my blindness and my story that I can share with all of you today. My brokenness is beautiful and your brokenness is beautiful as well. Producers Jim McNally, Irv Fair. Camera Jim McNally. Editors Jim McNally, Miriam Bakhtiar. Integrated Describe Video Specialist M. Williams. Narrator Jim Van Horn. Regional Content Specialist Jim Crisco. Special thanks Melissa Michaels. Graphics Andrew Antonello. Post-Production Supervisor Janice Civitilli. Senior Producer Jennifer Johnson. Director Production Karen I. Director Programming Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2019 Accessible Media Inc.